So I work for the OS team in Intel Edge Computing Group. So today, sorry, today my topic is about how to prioritize the server integration and this OS hardening. You know, Intel our team delivers the production Linux kernel, which are used by the external customer to in the their production environment. To satisfy to satisfy the customer, uh, we are not only deliver the, to the kernel, we also try to backport the CVE patches to our kernel PKC, and um, then customer can maybe they can use it directly. Yeah, as you know, there are so many, what's wrong? There are so many security issues every day, right? Uh, it takes many resources and uh, time to mitigate them. So we have to balance our resource, right? And also our uh, risks about how to do it. Yeah. I will share how we did it in our daily work. Uh, the top, this topic is for the beginners. So at the beginning, I prefer to go through some basic concept. And after that, I will show how we did it in our daily work, how to prioritize the survey mitigation. Uh, at last, there will be, if there are some time, you can ask questions, yeah. Um, this page shows some basic concept of the CVE and OS hardening. OS hardening. CVE is, means the common vulnerability and explosions. It normally has a CVE ID, uh, for example, CVE so dash some 20, 25, and also some numbers, and we host some structured date of the CVE record, CPS state, something like that. Uh, we also have the CVE board. It's an organization responsible for the strategic <coughs> Uh, direction and operation, and the policies and the rules of the CV program. And we also have the CV program is an international community driven efforts to identify and catalog uh, the CVEs. Yeah. This, this, this GitHub, GitHub, process, GitHub project has a lot of information about the CV program and the resource can be used. We also have the CV Library Authority. You know, it's, uh, it's an authority. Uh, just with the basic scope and responsibility to regularly assign CV IDs and publish uh, corresponding CV records to them. Now, there are a lot of CVNAs, uh, for example, the Intel, AMD, and kernel.rg. But before, uh, before the 2024 20, February, uh, kernel.rg is not a CA, but after that, it can, it's his. Uh, we also have a product. Almost all the CV are related to the two-one product. It can be the hardware, software, and maybe also the service, libraries, a lot of things. Yeah, that's just a basic concept. After that, I prefer to show the three process. Uh, I think it's very important. Why? Because it not only help us to report the issues to the, uh, to the program, or maybe the CNA, but also it can help us be aware of the three issues as early as possible. Yeah. Uh, normally, we should just, uh, um, Send the, send the discovered vulnerabilities to the CVE program, and the reporter reserves request the CVE ID, which then is stored for the reported vulnerability. Once the reported vulnerability is confirmed, the record is published to the CVE list. Yeah. After that, the records are published by the CVE program uh, partners from around the world. But for the Linux kernel, it's much easier. If you find the security issues, just send a playtest email to the security at kernel.rg to report it. And you know, there are a lot of um, dedicated person in the Linux kernel.rg. They're just uh, trying to review the changes in the uh, mainline or maybe the stable tree. And if they find it, it's, it's maybe a potential issues. They assign, just to assign a CVID to it. Yeah. This is how it works in the open source community. You know, uh, if you find uh, security issues, what will you do? Or may maybe it's not security issues. Maybe you will just um, uh, debug it or just uh, Google it in the internet, and maybe you, also, you will also discuss it in the uh, open forum, for example, Stack Overflow or somewhere, right? Um, what does that mean? That, that means there are a lot of clues and uh, information about the potential security issues in the, in the inter inter internet, right? So if you have a tool, you can collect this information and analyze it, and you can be aware of the security issues as early as possible. You do not need to wait for the publish. Just uh, collect this information and do it. This is a very interesting topic. Maybe we can discuss it next time. Uh, normally, uh, team normally does not uh, disclose CVE issues until the fixed patch are available. 
Yeah, this is a uh, direct target. Normally they will do it, but uh, not, that's not, not always true. Uh, this thing happens uh, is in the 2024 February. You know, before that, kernel.rd kernel is not the same. That means it cannot send the CVID to security issues. Um, but after that, we, we can do it. Um, but that means no CV will be automatically assigned for uh, unfixed security issues in the Linux kernel alignment assignment. Because it just uh, reveals the kernel changes in the stable tree or the list mainline tree and check the path if there are security issues. So after that, they, they assign the CVID. That means no CVID or no CV will be published before that, before the publish, yeah. But they have a shortcoming. They just uh, focus on the um, LTS and the, the mainline kernel. Yeah, but they do not care the other private kernel. Maybe you, if you want to maintain a private kernel version, for example, see it uh, six dot fifteen or something like that, you have to backport the patches by yourself. Uh, that's my proposal. We, you know, in our team, we just stay on the long-term support kernel and reuse the resource from the committee. That's the best practice. Um, but sometimes we also need a, need a backporting the patches from the mainline kernel to the LTS kernel. I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe that's need to be improved. Yeah. Uh, this page shows my uh, some static data from since the 2021 to last month. I summarized all the these kernel seven years uh, in this uh, almost uh, four years. And be, you know, you can see before the 2020. T4 February, most of the Linux kernel CVs have already been mitigated in the late, latest Linux mainline kernel before it's published, and only about 9% are not. But after the 2024, all the CVs are mitigated in the Linux mainline branch before it's published, before this kernel as a CNA, right? That means they can assign it back itself. This table, I just summarized the time gap between the published time and the fix, uh, and the time step of the fixed patch in mainline kernel. Yeah. So the minus value means the CV has already been fixed before it's published. Yeah. Then how to prioritize them? Yeah. The first thing is about the threat modeling. Well, you must understand what you want to protect. The key as what the key assets are. Yeah. Understand the, the attack surface that can be used by adversaries and uh, have a clear secret objective. Evaluate the, the protect level from the confidentiality, integrity, and availability perspective. You know, in the last year, our team delivered a small operating system. The name is Azure Ad Microvisor Toolkit. So it works as a Docker container. You know, when we designed the certain modeling of that uh, small OS, uh, which are a lot of security features, for example, the DM variety and read only FS. We have also have those SDUs. So, with all of these things, it can help us uh, reduce a lot of security risks. Yeah. So, th that means we can prioritize the three with them. Uh, yeah. Sorry. So, after that, I prefer to under we also pay more attention to the CVS and score. Uh, I think this is very most important uh, factors that they need to be first. Uh, it have four metric groups. First, uh, first one is the base metric group and the threat metric group, and the environment metric group and the supplemental metric group. I think the first one, base metric group, is the most important thing. I think it has more, it uh, reflects the um, uh, intrinsic um, characteristics of a CVE. It does not change over time, and it does not change over, uh, in the user's um, environment. But for the threat uh, metric group and the environment metric group, they are different. Um, they, maybe they need to change. They will change over time, and um, they will, we will also change in different uh, user, uh, user, user cases. Um, about the threat metric group, maybe someone find a new way to reuse this uh, uh, security vulnerability. And they can have a new POC to do the attacking, right? That means then the threat of can, can change. And about the environment metric group is more about the uh, threat modeling. Uh, because you have everyone has a different threat modeling, they may uh, so that means they may have may have different score in this part. So we we need to combine these three together to prioritize your CVE and to know to understand if you if you need to fix it. 
in your product. The last one is a supplemental material group with just some intrinsic characteristics, and it does not change over time. Yeah. And this one is uh, KEV. We also uh, focus on this one. Uh, this is, uh, you know, the CIC, they maintain this authoritative source of the vulnerabilities that have been already exploited in the wild. Uh, so that means it, um, you have to fix it. How to prioritize it to f to to fix them? Yeah, it's, it's also mandatory, I think, in our product. It can also um, available in the JSON CSV format and include the CID description, a lot of things. So this uh, license is uh, in the Creative Common uh, one dot zero license. You can use it in your daily work. Uh, normally, uh, you know, we have a uh, internal. Uh, tools. We have already integrated this catalog into our tools that it can fill out this series. If you are working on the Android OS, it's also this one is very important. We also need to f focus on the Android security bulletin. Google has the uh, mass release for the Android security bulletin and it contains, uh, that contains a list of security vulnerabilities affecting Android devices. Uh, this device, uh, this series are from the, maybe from the chipset vendor, maybe also from the Google. Um, if you want to, to get the past the CTS test or the CVS STS test, you have to fix all the issues in this list. And this one is uh, about the EPSS score. I'm not sure if you know it. Uh, it's a uh, data driven efforts for estimating the likelihood, the probability that a software vulnerability will be exploited in the wild. Uh, you just uh, set up an uh, AI module between the three information and the exploration activity in the wild. They try to uh, set up this relationship. Uh, of course, maybe you can also train your, train your model in the future by yourself. Yeah. Uh, it, it's just the probability value is just between zero and one. The higher the score, the greater the probability that the vulnerability will be exploited. So, Mm, this tool, that's the GRYP, this tool is, is available in the Ubuntu. I'm not sure if it's available in the Red Hat or somewhere, but it's available in the Ubuntu. It can be used to, to, do, the, to, to do the scan for the Docker container and the list the, um, the EPI score of every CVE. Yeah. Of course, you can also integrate this, uh, um, this state into your automation tool. It has the um, web API and also the JSON data. Yeah. It's very easy to use it. So do we trust this this score? So it's a very interesting yeah, topic. Um, the left picture is from the EPSS score website. It just lists the efficiency and the coverage of the of the EPS score and also the CVS score. In the live in the right is the uh, distribution of the EPS score of the list kernel CVEs. It's very interesting, you know, um, I, start, I also summarized the EPS uh, score in the list kernel. And uh, most of the EPS score is uh, below the 0 0.02. So that is very small. That means that there are less probability to be used to do the exploration, to do to, to the attacking. Yeah. But for the user space and also user space component, the EPS score is very high. That means maybe we need to prioritize the three years in the user space, just from the probability perspective. Yeah. Uh, this one is about the system hardening and OS benchmarking. You know, there are a lot of OS benchmarking criteria, for example, CIS. They provide a lot of uh, guidelines, hand down guidelines about uh, how to harden it. So which, which parameter should be closed, disabled, which one should it be enabled, a lot of things like that. And we also have the kernel config hardening. Um, but not all of them should be checked, I think, should be followed them. You need to um, check it, do it case by case. Just all these are automation tools can be used. Other proposals, maybe the first one is to go back to your threat modeling, be clear what you want to protect and the, the, what the threat modeling is. And also follow the key security rules, for example, defense in depth and the time to use, time to create and time to use, or some, some things. Also use the latest and active open source software from community. Um, 
just try to use the latest one as you can, but maybe there are some compatibility issue between the user space and the uh, kernel space, and also between the among the kernel space. Yeah, just to balance it, and also you can also disable the feature which is only required from the kernel config or kernel command line, kernel command parameter, kernel parameter. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, this is our delivery. You know, we deliver the uh, production use kernel to the customer. There are a lot of out of tree patches which are integrated into the service, into this kernel. All the ECG customers can use it. And we also have the Azure Micromaster Toolkit. It's a lightweight silly, can optimize the and the immutable container host, a small OS. Yeah. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. Any question? Questions? Okay, thank you. Anyone? I think we have quite some time actually for questions. Thank you already for the very interesting talk. So um, with the current CNA policy by the Linux kernel, does it also mean that we are pretty much blind for any potential security issues in non-maintained kernels because there are no CVEs if a bug only affects a non-maintained kernel? Mm, sorry, I, I'm not sure if I understand it. Here, maybe um, we can discuss it after this meeting, okay? Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, thanks. Okay, then let's thank the speaker. Oh, wait, wait. Uh, I'm just wondering whether you have any comments on uh, patch management, because this COVID comes hand in hand with CVEs, right? Oh, patch management, right? Yes. You know, currently, in our delivery, we use a Qt, Qt management tool, to manage the CVE issue, CVE patches. And um, normally we, we will put uh, push these patches into, on top of our feature patches. And uh, we also deliver the kernel overlay to its customer, which also have the three patches. Yeah. Everyone can use it. Yes, uh, related to that, that question, All right? So <clears throat> do you have a database of uh, CVs and patches that have fixed the CVs, because I was looking into like using this for training like some yeah, yeah, LL yeah. LLMs and so on. So yeah, sure. publishing a database like that would be super useful, right? We, so we have, we have the internal database to, to have the CV information, which one has already been fixed, which have not, not been fixed, uh, not only in the committee, but also in our, uh, in our BKC kernel. Yeah. But so you can also use this one. Let me show you. <laughs> not here. The first page, oh no, this one, with this link, uh, GitHub slash three yes. project. There are a lot of information about the three information. Okay, uh, and it, it has the diffs of uh, how the patch has, like how the bug has been addressed. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah. It, ha it has uh, also has the CP information. That means which version has this 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 three, which version has not, and uh, they are in the JSON format. Yeah, it's okay. very easy to be used. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the talk. So for uh, the very critical issues like Spectre, this was before there was uh, C uh, Linux as a CNA. Yeah. And for these, there is still like an embargo system in place where they coordinate with distros and so on. Or did that change now that Linux is a CNA? Uh, let, let me talk discuss with you after this later. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? I get some exercise. <laughs> uh, not a question, but a, a little bit polemic remark about your question about uh, patch handling. Get your patches upstream, then uh, you don't have to handle patches anymore yourself. Usual suggestion. Um, anyone else? Okay, let's thank the speaker again. Okay.